chief who will let our warriors do their job and go kick ISIS ass. Oh. Oh. Ready for someone who will secure our borders to secure our jobs and to secure our homes. Ready to make America great again. Are you ready to stump for Trump? I'm here to support the next president of the United States, Donald Trump. All right, I, I rest my case. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the junior high school cheerleading doesn't seem to move me. But all right, you know, different strokes for different folks. Maybe there's a, a demographic that'll come out of the... Uh, I, I watch out, I better watch out what I say now. I envision the wife beater shirt, uh, uh, a rented motorhome. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I mean, I, I'm sorry. Uh, guns all over the house. <laughs> It's a stereotype that people who would normally vote for a conservative are afraid of. That's what they see. Guns in, all over the house, even in the crib, they have guns, like a gun stacked underneath the, the pillow. In case someone breaks in and they have to run it, then they got one under the pillow in the kitchen drawer, on, under the toilet, on the flush toilet, they have one like in the Godfather, in the, in, they have one in the outhouse. Come on, you know, lighten up a little, a little bit here. But we should be talking about Hillary Clinton. Loose emails sink what? WVFT Radio. Chris, you have a rhyme for that one? Hey, uh, loose emails sink corrupt females. <laughs> if only that were true. If only that were true. I actually wanted it to say something else, like, you know, loose ships sink ships. Loose lips sink ships, right? Meaning it, it helps the enemy hurt us. So what you're saying is a little on a reversal of that, but it's funny anyway. Loose emails, you, you, loose emails should sink corrupt females is what you really mean, right, Chris? Right. <laughs> All right, I'm sending you a copy of, of Government <laughs> Zero because you're such a good sport. Let's see what else we have in the sound bin. Hold it, I got it all the way across the, the board here. I had a nightmare last night. I didn't sleep. I had nightmares that I was in different studios and none of them worked right. And it was like a minute to the show start, and I was screaming for the producer, Robert, Robert, where are you? And pressing buttons, and they didn't work, and things were disconnected because I'm moving around a lot. I told you I have one, two, three home studios within a three-mile radius north of San Francisco. I have another home studio in San Francisco. I have the city studio at KSFO, which I could use with advance notice. And what happens is after it rains out here, the AT&T boxes get, get flooded with water, and they put me out of business. So, in fact, just before the show, yesterday and the day before, I had to run 20 minutes before the show in my car, like speeding, over to yet another studio that I have in, like, in the background, in abeyance. And it worked like a charm. I hadn't been in there in years. I did all of my early shows in that house, all of them. It's a little ghoulish because all the memories are when the children were young, the pictures and the this. And, like, the ceiling is leaking. It's, uh, it has to be repaired. But the studio's perfect. But every time I go upstairs, I see, like, a beam is holding up the ceiling. It has to be redone. It's unbelievable. Everything's in turmoil in that house. And, I, you know, I'm a very orderly man. Now, liberals would say that there's a psychological disorder when you're overly orderly. But that's the way I am. Like, I like to line my shoes up at night. I like everything lined up and orderly. I like things orderly. I have to have things orderly in order to work. Disorder and early sorrow. Now, I guess liberals like disorder. They like mayhem. I can't take mayhem. I'm a very precise person, so I like things to be where they should be and work the way they should work. Then my mind works. These three hours are supposed to be perfect. Do you know that the three hours that I'm on the radio should be the most perfect three hours of the day? Do you understand that? In these three hours, I should transcend humanity. I should transcend my human form. And fly like an eagle, so to speak. And I can only do that when everything is working perfectly. And the other 21 hours, I'm like everybody else. I crawl like a worm on the ground, or like a broken leg and a broken arm. As Freud said, this is funny now, I used to love this phrase. Sigmund Freud wrote that if you wake up one day and find out that you are broken, and you can only crawl on one arm and one leg, he said, crawl on one arm and one leg. That was a great thing. That got me through a lot of my life. Because eventually the... The leg that isn't working and the arm that isn't working will come back. you got to keep going. you got to keep moving. It's just another one of my inspirational every day thrown in because I function that way. So here I am in one of the studios that's not flooded out. 
after dreaming all night about studios that aren't working. And there are other sound bites. Palin, Trump, Trump, Palin. Let's see if there's anything but Trump, Palin, Palin, Trump. Uh, Graham is the sourpuss of the election. He has always been a bad, bad, bad. I'll use the phrase they use, bad actor. Gra Lindsey Graham has always been a bad actor. Uh, um, <clears throat> a lawyer, taught lawyer. Who <clears throat> was very jealous because everyone can look right through him. Listen to the bad actor, Lindsey Graham, in clip nine. I think there's a percentage of our people have had a hard time accepting Obama to be president. He's driven our party crazy. He started, if he had governed like he'd campaigned, it would be different. But he's gone so extreme in many areas that people in our party, at least a, a fraction of them, are just so upset by him. And Obama is giving, um, excuse me, uh, Trump is feeding into that. His message is not a, not a good message for us, and it will catch up with us in general. So if you really want to make Hillary Clinton president of the United States, vote for Donald Trump. Dishonest beats crazy. Oh, God. Which just shows you why Lindsey Graham was never qualified to even be a senator. Now, Bernie Sanders, as you well know, is the laughing stock of the American political circus. I, I thought I never thought this day would come when I would see the very people that I ran away from in New York get so far in the political system. And by the way, the guy is a throwback stereotype of the spritzer, the 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 commie spritzer that New York was famous for. You know, always uh, espousing Marxism and capitalism is no good, and the system is rotten. Bring the system down. The system is ruined. You know, Hollywood's filled with them. They're billionaires, millionaires, and trillionaires, and they they can't stand capitalism because they, they hide their money and they don't pay taxes. They live on 400-foot yachts in the Mediterranean to avoid taxes, or they put it through a triple Dutch and a quadruple Dutch uh, uh, Irish system and pay 1% a year on taxes. They hide their money overseas, and they're all marching around like progressives, like Sanders. I, un I, I just can't believe this. So now he gets endorsed by MoveOn.org, a criminal organization, all of whom should be investigated by the House of Un-American Activities Committee, and you'd find things going on in MoveOn.org that would very much surprise you. They now endorse uh, crazy commie Sanders in clip number 10. I would love to have the endorsement of every progressive organization in America. We're very proud to have received recently the endorsement of MoveOn.org. Uh, we've Ugh. received the endorsement of uh, Democracy for America. These are grassroots Soros. organizations Soros. representing millions of workers. Soros. What we are doing in this campaign, it just blows my mind every day. Blows my mind. Clear. You're so cool. We're taking on not only Wall Street and yeah, the economic right, establishment, right. we're taking on ah, the political establishment. All right. Go have a shot of seltzer on me. Go get the bottle. Give yourself a nice, a nice, refreshing seltzer and a pickle. Let's see. Uh, I hope it's him. I hope she falls and he rises. I really do. I want to see communism versus capitalism. Finally, a blowout election. Eighty-five, fifteen. Back in a minute. All right, here we go. Those of you who can't get enough of the uh, immigrant and. You just love Muslims, and you think anyone who opposes the immigration by Muslims is a racist. As you know, there was a rape epidemic over New Year's Eve in Germany by Muslims. Plain English. I'm not mincing words. I'm not changing the words. I'm not putting salt, pepper, or spices on it. An imam in Cologne, Germany, said that the girls were raped because they were half naked and wore perfume. Warning women against adding fuel to the fire, the so-called imam of a, of a Salafist Cologne Mosque said that the victims of the New Year's Eve rape attacks were themselves responsible for their sex assault by dressing inappropriately and wearing perfume. Speech, speaking to major Russian channel RENTV, TV, Imam Sami Abu Yusuf's remarks came during a 12-minute segment bringing Russians up to date with the latest developments in the migrant invasion of Europe. Sandwiched between eyewitness footage of migrant rampages in Cologne, women being sexually assaulted by Arab gangs, and a segment on a surge of interest in self-defense courses in Germany. The so-called imam told the interviewer, we need to react properly, not to add fuel to the fire. And then he explained in the view of Salafist Islam why hundreds of women found themselves groped, sexually assaulted, in some cases raped, by gangs of migrant men in cities across Germany, he said the events of New Year's Eve were the girls' own fault because they were half-naked and wearing perfume. 
It is not surprising the men wanted to attack them. Dressing like that is like adding fuel to the fire. Now, how any liberal woman can support bringing in throwbacks like this to America indicates to me that they're either not thinking or they are the useful idiots that Marx wrote about, and they're digging their own grave. That opens up one line in 855-407-28. I see you're still stuck only on one topic, which is Michael Savage's Palin thing. Trump today doubled down and said he would certainly appoint it to his cabinet. All right, fine. Academy members defend their Oscar votes to imply racist is extremely offensive. <laughs> sure. All the good white liberals of Hollywood, they're not racist. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Guess who's coming to dinner? You know, I mean, come on, please. You know, the fact is, is that picking a movie because of someone's race is stupid. That's affirmative action. Samuel Jackson is a terrible actor. Just using racism now as a guise to win some kind of a award. I'll be back in a minute on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. No Cuban music. They're not ready for it today. This is a strictly 99% Anglo audience. We're discussing Trump and Palin. No, no one of any flexibility is listening to the show today. They've all tuned the channel out. They, they, the others have gone. They can't take it. They wanted me to get a little more flexy earlier, but I didn't. You know, my motto has been borders, language, culture forever, right, since since uh, 94. And when I define culture, I said our culture is based upon the U.S. Constitution and the Bible. But that got left out in many discussions about my value system. So maybe I should change it from borders language culture to borders language constitution, and you'll further understand what I've been saying to you all these years. You think I don't know what the U.S. Constitution is just because I don't hold it up every day and beat you over the head with it? We we'll have to hit you over the head with something every day for you to understand that I understand what it is? Borders language culture includes the U.S. Constitution. Just go and listen to my speeches going back to 94 and also look at my books. But the fact of the matter is that pretty much defines for me what a candidate needs to support. And the number one reason that Trump is surging, according to Gary Pohl, I read, let's put this away already, because he's strongest on his message about the military and taking down ISIS. You know that those are the number one issues on Americans' minds, which is the, the threat of ISIS, those black-clad Nazi, fascist, whatever you want to call them, raping and pillaging their way across the Middle East. They blew up the oldest Christian structure in the world. Satellite photos came out showing that they blew it up to dust. The oldest Christian structure in the world. If ever there was an argument to disband the United Nations that does virtually nothing but feather its own nest, it is this. Where are the UN troops? Why are they not sent in to protect Christian monasteries and Christian individuals and Christian towns? They're worthless. There should be no U.N. There is no need for them. And that's something that Donald Trump really needs to look into. Maybe not initially. We have trouble here. I would get rid of the U.N. I would eliminate it. I'd send it out. Get rid of it. It's useless. It's nothing but a bunch of bureaucrats who do deals for themselves. Have they protected the elephants? Check no. Have they protected the mountain gorilla? Check no. Have they protected the rhino? Check no. Have they protected the lion? Check no. Have they protected the tiger in India? Check no. Have they protected the bear in China? Check no. Have they protected Christians in the Middle East? Check no. What have they done? Nothing. No one brings this up. Maybe Trump would bring it up. Maybe get rid of the UN and throw it out of the United States. Maybe you can turn the U.N. Plaza into Trump Plaza. <laughs> you imagine a condominium in that building? What a view that would be. A lot of space around that building. U.N. Plaza could become Trump Plaza. <laughs> uh, okay, WDRC Radio. Glenn, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hi. I have a theory about... Why an imam would say such a provocative statement that he did in Germany? It, is, it would be... Go on. Say it already. Hello. I'm sorry. Uh, I, it, 
it would be to sensitize us to the fundamentalist uh, Islamic way of 